Hello everybody and welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this video, I'm going to show you how I made this Baroque inspired cake that was, I'm going to be honest, not on my schedule for this week, but when I got it done, I thought that looks more Halloween than I had intended. So I wanted to upload it this week. And this cake is actually fairly simple to do with some basic tools. So if this sounds like something that sounds interesting to you, stick around, we'll get right to it after the intro. So the first thing we have to do is assemble the cake. And this is just a white cake that I used for this tutorial. And I'm using some thickened buttercream as a dam to keep the buttercream from spilling out. The entire filling was actually used, I used the thickened um, buttercream for the entire filling. Um, it works just as well as the buttercream without it being thickened. So just to make life easier, I just went ahead and just used it for the entire filling. So I'm using the buttercream that has spilled out the sides, just squished out just a little bit as the start of my crumb coat. And then I just grabbed a little bit more to finish the crumb coat. A crumb coat is just a thin coat of buttercream that locks your crumbs in so that they do not show through your final coat. Now you scrape most of that layer off. You just want it to have a thin coat. And then once you get that coated, stick it in your refrigerator for 20 minutes or your freezer for 10 minutes until it is firm to the touch. And then you can go in and do your final coat. For this cake, I wanted it to have um, a shadowy kind of purple, burgundy-ish kind of look to it. So the, but I was planning on using some painting. I was gonna do some painting to get some of that color into the crevices that I knew I was gonna make. But I decided that I wanted to go ahead and start your base color with this. It's a combination of purple and pink. So I guess that would be a lavender color that I used. And this is my trick here. I started with, this is just a, um, a silicone pastry brush. And I have a cup of water next to it and a towel. And I'm just using that pastry brush to create some texture in that buttercream. And for this cake, I did use a Swiss meringue buttercream because I wanted something that wasn't gonna crust because I knew I was gonna wanna play with it with some texture that would require some dragging of some tools across the surface. And that wouldn't work so good. Uh, wow, that was quick, where'd I go? That wouldn't work so good with a crusting American buttercream. You have to uh, work fairly quick with the American crusting buttercream. And I knew I was gonna want to do this in stages. So I stuck with the Swiss meringue. It does not crust, which is great for some techniques. So I'm just pulling in that extra lip of buttercream that I created with the brush. And I decided that I wanted it to be a little deeper. So I went in with just a fork and I am creating some deeper grooves into the buttercream. Now this is a little too uniform for what I wanted. So I did go back in and use the page pastry brush again to kind of soften it a little bit. And the uh, fork actually did leave some raised pieces. It scrapes it out more than the pastry brush. So using your pastry brush is going to smooth that out a little bit, but you still have the depth of the lines from the fork. So to make the Baroque pieces that I add, added to the outside of the cake, I just used some fondant. No Tylos this time, just some straight fondant and some silicone molds that I had on hand. I will try to find a link for where you can get these silicone molds if you're interested and I will try to put that in the description box. So I did not pop these in the freezer. Um, these bigger molds, sometimes you don't need to pop it in the freezer. And actually I didn't for this one either because I think for the swag mold that I used here, I'm gonna call it a swag mold because of the shape of it. I think it's not so deep of a mold. So that's why it released pretty easy too. Now you just kind of push it into all those little nooks and crannies. And then I used this clay cutting tool to, to cut off the excess. And fill in if you need to, if that cutter cuts down too deep into your mold and cuts out too much fondant. And there is the little swag one. 
So once I have chilled this cake to the point where I, it is dry to the touch, I went ahead and went in with, this is a combination of purple and black, and a little bit of maroon, a deep, deep maroon luster dust that I had, and added some Everclear to make it thin, because I wanted it to kind of settle into those cracks or crevices that I created, the texture that I created with the two different tools, the fork and the pastry brush. I wanted it to kind of settle in there to get that depth of color. But I did want to have more concentration of color at the top and the bottom. And I also created some shadowing around the fondant once I attached that. I'm just using my clean hands, always clean hands, to kind of um, mute the color a little bit. You could probably use a dry brush, or actually, no, I wouldn't say a dry brush. I would use a clean brush dipped in Everclear or vodka if you wanted to not use your hands. And, you know, since this is from, you know, my family, they don't care if I have my hands on it, but they are clean. And then once I got the top where I wanted it, I went into the bottom and did the same thing and just brushed up. And the middle section, I wanted it to be a little paler than the top and the bottom, like I said. So I'm kind of brushing from the top down and then from the bottom up so that you have your heavier concentration on the top and on the very bottom. Because when you brush up, you have brushed off a lot of that extra color. And for the top, I just kind of pulled it in just brushed from the outside edge into the middle and then just touched up where I thought it needed some more depth. Now guys, I am not a painter. So if I can do this, anybody can. And then I just went ahead and stuck the molds on, the uh, Baroque pieces on while it was still a little bit damp and that is how they stuck on to the, the buttercream. That's why I didn't have to put any buttercream on the back of the molds or of the, um, the pieces and I didn't need to use any piping gel. It was already kind of damp, so I was able to get them to stick just as is. That piece right there I had to cut to fit, so that will be the back. <laughs> and then did the same through the top. Now you can space these how you want to. You could stagger the points so that they um, aren't the points of the molds if you want them to be staggered in between each other, that's fine too. I just went this way. And then I used that paint, that same paint that I had, and went over the top of the pieces, the fondant pieces, for two reasons. I wanted to add a little bit of depth of color and I wanted to get that cornstarch off of there. So this is multi-purpose. Now while that is drying a little bit, I went ahead and got my floral topper put together. I just used what I had on hand, some wire. This is um, floral wire that is wrapped brown and then um, some artificial flowers that I already had. I added stems with the floral wire. You just kind of use your floral tape to attach the stem or that piece of wire which is, kind of becomes the stem to the flower itself. Now I know I used white, that was the only floral tape I had, but I went in and I painted some brown food coloring onto it so that it didn't stick out as stark white. <laughs> that wouldn't look so good. Now I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want these pieces to go. I didn't want a bunch of floral and I wanted it to be more kind of in the middle-ish. I do a lot of my floral placement off-center and I wanted to change that up a little bit. So I'm not using a whole lot of pieces. And I'm going to do the placement a little different this time.
And just kind of use your fingers to arrange them how you think they look nice. There is some flexibility there. And I cut off the ends, the excess ends, and I made sure to wrap that with a floral tape also so that it would be food safe since those are going to be sticking into the cake. And here is where I'm just using some brown food coloring. I just dipped my brush in the bottle. To be honest, you could add, add some Everclear if you wanted to, but I knew I wanted it fairly deep in color, so I just went ahead and did it straight that way. So this is where I went back in and I added some shadowing, just a little bit. And it is with that same paint that I had created earlier. I did add a little bit more purple, just because I kind of, I was running out, it was drying out and I needed to add some more color to it. And I had run out of that deep, deep burgundy color that I had, or maroon, depends on what you want to call it. <laughs> So I just added some black to some purple, and I thought it worked just fine. And then I just stuck the flower right in the top there and touched up any spots that needed to be touched up. So there you have it, guys, my Baroque-inspired textured buttercream slash Halloween, I guess, <laughs> cake. So I hope you like what you saw, and if you did, please like, subscribe, share, comment, and hit the notification bell so that you know every time I upload a new video. And I thank you for watching, and we'll catch you the next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.